Thank you, Bill Ted. Roll call, please. Mrs. Burkett? Here. Mr. Crawford? Here. Mrs. Mr. Gonzalez? Here. Mr. Norris? Mr. Ritzenthaler? Here. Mr. Norris apologizes for his absence. Uh, the track meet was rescheduled and his daughter is running at Perkins, so he will not be here today. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have a motion to adopt the agenda. So moved. Second. Okay, roll call, please. Mr. Gonzalez? Yes. Mr. Ritzenthaler? Yes. Mr. Burkett? Yes. Mrs. Crawford? Yes. Okay, public participation. Each person who wishes to address the board will be asked to give his or her name and address. Remarks should be limited to three minutes in length. If after everyone who wishes to do so has had the opportunity to speak, additional comments can be made up to a total lot of time of 30 minutes. Okay, special presentations. Yes, Mr. Kenya and the high school math teachers are here, several, and students as well to speak to a new class that we have this year. Mr. Kenya. All right, uh, to the Board of Education and members here, I just wanted to present you. We're three quarters away through our new math modeling and reasoning course. Uh, you're going to hear a couple of names and terms, but uh, we're just going to give a shout out to them. And the kids are going to kind of present uh, this new thing that we've been doing here at Norwalk High School this year. Uh, so it was last November and October, I sat down with uh, Becky and Allison for a state webinar about this program and kind of like, is this something we want to do? And I'm so glad that they jumped on board. I just want to shout out to the teachers and thank them. Um, they've done some weeks out of their summer, a day a month, I think a day a month, uh, and quarterly had meetings. The state has provided a lot of support for this class ongoing behind the scenes. I want to thank them for their support and everything going on. They have presented everything tonight, so I will turn it over to them. So as Mr. Kenya said, this uh, course was developed from the Ohio Department of Education, and it can take the place of an algebra two level math class or a senior class is the way we use it. Um, it's very helpful for kids going right into the workforce, teaches problem solving, critical thinking, real world problems, et cetera. Um, just wanted to show this is our logo. We had a logo contest. It was actually one of our geometry units. And this is Ali Wards that won for both classes. They voted on hers. So that was good. I've enjoyed teaching it. It's not your typical sit in rows kind of class. And I think the kids have really enjoyed it as well. So we're going to start out with AJ. Hi, I'm Andrew Bierswinski, um, and I'm going to talk about um, some of the themes that are in the class. So we have eight themes, and so, so the eight themes are uh, problem solving, numbers and quantity, functions, more functions, geometry, statistics, probability, and application. Um, so at the beginning of the year, we had our first challenge, which was the marshmallow challenge, where we had to build, um, uh, like basically, a, I don't know, an Eiffel Tower looking type of thing. Um, with some noodles, some tape, and a marshmallow and make it stand. It was um, really fun, and it's, it was one of my, my favorites because at the beginning of the year, it's the first thing we did, and we introduced it to the class, and it's really hands-on, and uh, I enjoyed it. Um, so, yeah, it's a little more on that that was. Okay, uh, this project, uh, we knew the length of a football field, but uh, we had a friend of ours via scale that was um, and we also use it for the light. Hi, I'm Emily Schlachter. So we use sheets to organize our data in the class for various projects. Uh, for this example, it's a road trip. Something that I like about this project and many others is that we're not being spoon fed. Um, that's my one problem about school is that I feel like me not being too engaged with subjects, just listening to somebody uh, tell me what I need to know is not really me learning something, just something being said to me. So I love this class. I love how we're able to use the knowledge we already know and put math into real world problems. Yeah. Uh, 
this one, we had to use uh, rubber bands and a Barbie doll to have uh, pretty much have the Barbie doll experience and bungee jump. And I'm taking physics at this point, and it was very fun to like the concepts at the same time. We were Now, <laughs> this one, by far the best one, obviously. Who doesn't like puck buddy during school? Especially during math class. Doesn't get better than that. So uh, we designed our uh, goal courses using geometry. So we, we uh, first off, we had to find the angles of um, things to the hole. So we did things like we started up here and you have to design, or you look at the course and figure out how you can hit it using only one um, bank shot or maybe two banks or three banks. And so uh, we did that on paper first, and then we applied it in real life. We went up to the, the wrestling area uh, by the gymnasium, and then uh, we made our own uh, courses. Um, ours was the best yeah. uh, <laughs> discussion there. Um, uh, <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, no, they were very. It was very fun, and it was my favorite part about this class, just because it's, so fun. it's fun putting. Doesn't get better than that. Exactly. <laughs> Okay, so we thought it'd be fun to include you in just, this is one of our activities that we started out with a uh, little collaborative uh, learning and partners and just also like work hard, work smarter, not harder, that phrase. So we want you to take part in the little activity if you could read the directions here. And that's another thing too is we have to learn to take a step back as teachers and not just tell them what to do. So we want you to read the directions. It's a 60-second activity, so we thought you'd like to partake tonight. Okay, that sounds good. <laughs> 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 when you guys had that butt button, you used those plastic, <laughs> plastic uh, angles. Oh, those were boards. Too bad. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Two by fours, but the, was there those angle things? The white yeah. ones. So, yeah. other than the wooden tape, yeah. you can use anything. Yeah. 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 So, there's like a there. So, we have people use forks. Someone used um, a wrestling bench. Yeah. Uh, used, um, uh, that was ours. So, it bounced off there pretty good. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, a little a little different because it was a concrete up in the mezzanine. Yeah. So, that really went. Some of the times it went a little crazy, but um, yeah, that was really cool. We enjoyed that one. Oh, for the people on the back, the rules are partners cannot hug to each other, uh, partners cannot help each other, and you both take turns, okay? The first person will begin by finding the number one circle, and the second person will circle yeah. the next number uh, in order, and so on. And you guys want to today. And I have my I have my stopwatch. So just wait a minute until I tell you that we didn't bring prizes. Sorry. <laughs> so we find on the other side of this. It's on the other side. Of this. Yes, it yes. Yeah. When we turn it over, you'll see a whole bunch of numbers. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. okay. So first person circles the number one. So if you want to go first, and then you would circle number two, you circle three, you circle four, you circle five. See how many you can circle before 60 seconds is up. This is so hard. Understand? Okay. Yeah, right. like people, they? Yeah. And you can't help each other. She was talking to me first. <laughs> <laughs> She's on your feet. All right. Ready, set, go. Oh. Yeah. You find one. Yeah. Okay, now you find two. <laughs> What are you doing? What are you doing? Ow! Can you talk to me? <laughs> I don't know about it. Oh, he's talking to me. He's panicking. He's panicking. 30 seconds left. Exactly. I believe in you. 15 seconds. Hmm. There's no one on one. <laughs> and. 
So at this point, we would say, like, what do you notice? What do you wonder? Is there, were there any patterns? Is there anything you can take a look at it that um, you can do? So, guys, you want to kind of tell me? Yeah, I'll show how to do it. Okay. Yeah, I'll show how to do it. So, let's, let's split this up into fours. Where's the markers? There's the markers. Oh, okay. We split it up into fours. I'll be number one. Oh, we don't know how to use it. I'll be number one. All right, there you go. Notice how one is in the top left, the top left, that's top left. And notice the best. Yeah. Wait, the oh, that's good. And notice how one's here, two. Is over here. And then notice how three down here. Four is over here. Is over here. Do we see a pattern? That's um. That's the whole thing. Split up into four, and you got to go in order, and they go repeating. And five yeah. right here. Yeah, we didn't get five. <laughs> you were right. just the first time. Just yeah. 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 We were just like, <laughs> trust me, when I got last place in my class, we did this. I was just, uh, but yeah, that's how you do that. And if normally we would go at least two minutes, so maybe by that time somebody would say, Oh, yeah, I see, I see a pattern. I don't know what's going on with it, but those are just the quick, quick little hitters we do to get the kids thinking and problem solving um, besides all our projects. <clears throat> So we had um, today in class, we had them um, put down um, some quotes, things that they liked about the class. Um, so we kind of highlighted in the yellow there some of the key terms, and that's exactly what we're trying to get out of the class with cooperative learning. A lot of them said it keeps them interested and active, like they want to participate. Um, so overall, it's a, it's a great course and a great option for our fourth year math. My name is Lauren Ott. My name is Amy Cooper. And AQR has been very valuable for my education because it has provided me with real world situations and teamwork skills. My favorite part about advanced quantitative reasoning is how hands on all the projects we do, such as mini golf course, which we had to build and use. I also like that we got to work in the groups and brainstorm with others. Thank you for listening. <laughs> They were. <laughs> they couldn't be here tonight if they wanted to participate. So thanks for that as well. Yeah, they were just so <laughs> um, oh, yeah, so yeah, after Mother's Day, Pup Pup will be open. So we want to do probably an evening get together. Everyone is welcome to join us for a little Pup Pup, down with Vargas and some ice cream. Um, unless we do a day field trip. I'm going to have to get that approved. <laughs> <laughs> Administration. <laughs> <laughs> to go down to Vargos. Sounds like a math problem, I guess. Figure out. <laughs> yeah. This is the one class where you can't be like, oh, what am I going to use this other than? That's this whole class. You can find it. Yeah, I mean, I've stepped in there before, and they're like, yeah, it's easier. Like, we don't even realize we're using math, and they're figuring out uh, uh, how many pizzas it would take to serve the whole school. So they're doing area of a circle kept doing that and a couple of kids figure out well i'm just going to do square pizzas here because that's a little easier to figure out the area but they're all calculating that and then most importantly what they don't realize is they're presenting to the class each time and that's something we kind of miss out um have too much passive learning always they're presenting their options presenting 
how they came to the answer, and then defending that answer, much like they'll get in the real world. So what's the future look like then? Piloting now, does it stay this, get stronger, expand? So what do we we signed up for a year or two. Uh, we have expanded our numbers who want the course for next year. Um, we have talked about making modifications to our lessons with some local businesses. Um, so bringing out problems like, well, how many yards of concrete do you need to make these castings? Like those are right in line with what AQR is and calculating, so working along some of our local companies, that's just one, for example, um, building our own uh, problems to solve in cooperation. So with a site visit, a problem, and a presentation, that's kind of what the future holds. The state kind of got us started, but we will work to build that and make it our own unique thing um, in the future. And enrollment, I think this year um, we have two classes, mm -hmm. and then next year there's going to be three classes of it. So more students are going to sign up. It's a good inspection. And we, it's like less than 20 in a class. We have 18 each now, and it's manageable when we're doing projects like this. So, so will it always be a senior class? Well, it's junior, senior. Junior, um, junior, senior. We want kids still right now to get through three years of math, so making sure they're either through algebra two or they're equivalent um, before they get to that to make sure they have all the information they need for the ACT and don't handicap possible college options in the future. Um, but we'll always evaluate where that stands with our community and what that is, because it is an equivalent, can take the place of, um, right now it's, I'll make sure they have three years of math and they can start math, like high school math in eighth grade, so. That's really cool. I'm just saying, kudos to you guys for doing that. Yeah. I know when I was in high school, if there was a class named Advanced Quantitative Reason, I would have been The other thing I appreciate about you guys, so I know I think you were in the musical, you played some football, you know, just to have those options and outlets to try different things. I really do think that's a magic in all city schools. So kudos to you for taking advantage of the opportunity. <laughs> Thanks for playing along with us. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, guys. We do have uh, cookies up front here, people. So if you're thinking about leaving, make your uh, way down here yeah. first. Yeah. <laughs> Don't I was gonna say, I don't remember. I'm gonna take that off. That's mine. I'm not going. Just one, guys. Yeah, just one. You see the numbers here. You can go to. Oh, okay. They showed it. One for the road, for sure. One for the road. One for the road. That's right. You don't have to. Or what? Second presentation. All right. Mr. Kraft, uh, All right. Food service director. All right. I just want to talk to you guys a little bit about some changes coming next year. Um, this shows a little bit about what we did this year, so you know um, some of the things we've done. But of course, we use Toff's dairy for our milk. Uh, we also use JM Fruit Farm, which is actually out of Clyde, certified apples from this year. Try to stay local. Um, we wanted to start with the National Farm School Group. I don't know if you guys did that before, I'm not sure, but I was putting on that from the school. Um, we're actually putting for some grants for them right now. We're working on that right now with them. So uh, put some, uh, that'll be later, a different presentation, but we're going to get some salad bars put in the high school, the middle school at Main Street. They're helping us maybe get some funding for it. So we're working on that. So that's what we here. Um, one other thing is, I don't know if you guys know what this is. What is CEP? What does it mean for Sanusky City? Or Sanusky, sorry, the Newark City School student. I'm so used to Sanusky. Sorry about the CEP program, but let me explain. Rock City Schools, um, 
I want to explain to you what it is a little bit, how it works and everything. But let me see what it is. Okay, we don't go. We won't go. We won't go now. Nope. Oh, there goes our two car. car. Slow. Okay. So what it means is all the students in our office of these schools are going to be free breakfast and lunch for the next four years automatically. Um, so it means from 2024 to 2025, the 24 25 to 2028 school year, um, they'll be on a four year cycle. They'll have to be renewed in uh, 2029, 20, which is no problem at all. And what it bases out of is based out of our direct certification, which is where we take our enrolled students and take it to where well, we have the ODEX now we use. and it, spits it back out and tells the students that are on, uh, should be on free lunches automatically in the state of Ohio. And right now we're at a 48% of our students are on that list. Um, with the three reduced applications, we're at 56%. So I know it's a little, sometimes match and figure it out. You know, some people are like, oh, so much to think of. But with 48%, you times it by the 1.6% factor from USDA, it gives us a 77% we get reimbursed from government. USDA at a free percentage. So what that means is all the kids in the district, all the students in the district, when they get a lunch or breakfast, if we sell 100 a day, we will get 77% of those will be reimbursed for at a for, for, for lunch, $4.75 for reimbursed that lunch. The other amount, the 23% will get at a paid price, which is like 40 cents, which is okay. Because what happens is, it does happen, you go from serving, like we'll say at the high school, we serve 330 lunches a day. You're going to go to serving 600 lunches a day, just like that. Boom, just like that. The elementaries, breakfast, that's going to be the big one. They go from serving 200 breakfasts a day to serving 400, 450 a day each building, which is going to super increase. And I guess our biggest problem we're going to work on right now, we're looking at right now, our biggest problem is seating capacity in the morning. The students come to eat breakfast because they're not a place to sit. To work on that now, but it's a good thing to have, I guess. Can't complain because they're eating breakfast, so it's a good thing. But um, um, I did sign this up already. Mr. Cooley has already signed it today. Um, we are good to go. Um, and right now, all we wait for now is we sit back and wait till July. They'll take all the information from me. They'll do an audit on this, make sure everything's legit, which it is legit, and we're good to go for the school year. So we are going to be good to go. Um, I'm telling you right now, it will not have a financial burden on us at all. I'm going to say right now, it will not. It actually be a plus for us because I was, I'll tell you right now, when I was in Sinesky, I was skeptical about it. I was worried about it, but we went for it. We did it. And it's like, wow, okay, it does, it does work. It really does work. And I know a lot of local schools around us are going to start on it too. So it's going to be huge, huge for the district, huge for the kids. That's what I'm going to say. Students are really going to adapt to it. And you're going to see further in the slides too what's going to happen for the year two with the CEP program. So it's going to be kind of neat. So. The one thing we have to look at too, though, is going to re remind parents any breakfast or lunch shirt is already required this year or the previous year that still has to be paid. Especially when we start to see Peter that, oh, I didn't have to, you know, it's free now. We still have to pay for it beforehand. I know it's going to be a burden on it. I know they're going to be upset, but we're going to work on that too. So it's going to happen. So, so we should understand what it means. So we're changing it up. So this is what we're going to change for next year. So you have everybody something a little different. Good to go. So the high school and middle school. We're going to do like a food court. It's almost we're going to keep everything the same way it is, but we're going to do something a little different with the food. You know, um, the high school, middle school, they serve about six different things a day. The high school is about three. We're going to change that. We're going to do a little bit more than that. We're going to do a little bit more for the students. We don't want to just give them three choices. We want to give them more. We want to give them seven or eight choices. Something where I know it's going to be competitive, where it's going to be consistent, where they come back all the time. The students going to come back and give something every single day. Because when you start the CEP, you want to make sure they're going to come back every day. I want to get lunch and practice every day. We want to do, and I'll go on, and we'll be further down here too. You'll see some more things here. here we, go. Um, we have a cooler like that. We're going to do stuff like that. Um, we're going to put that out there like that. We want to do more hot breakfasts. We want to stop trying to trying to get rid of some of the pop tarts. It drives me crazy. Um, the cereals. So do breakfast sandwiches. Do hot items for the kids. Do breakfast pizzas for the kids. Something fresh fruits for the kids. Try to steer. I, I my feeling is get away from the juices. Do more fresh fruits and vegetables for the kids. You know something fresh for them, not you know 
So, you know, this year, I, in my first year, I was stuck into what I got stuck in from the previous years. I know that but next year is going to be a different world. You know, I had to buy the things we had to buy. We have a choice. Next year is going to open. We joined it. We joined the co-op for next year, where this year we can only buy probably about 60 different items. Next year we can buy about 220 different items. So the world's going to open up for the kids in the district. It's going to be a whole different ball game next year with these kids. So this is going to tell you, they're not going to know, the students are not going to know what's going to hit them next year. It's going to be a totally different world. So thank God. So that's all i got to say about that. So I'm like, I'm like, this year was like really crazy trying to figure things out. But but next year it's going to be a totally different world. So. Not your parents' cafeteria. <laughs> okay, well now it's not your parents' cafeteria. Exactly, it's going to be the kids. It's going to be the students what they want. So, yeah. Like I said, we want to offer more variety of in-house prepared meals. You know, give them more of a lunch choices. Even the elementaries, we want to give them that too. Um, you know, I want to try to get away from doing uh, uncrustables every day. Why can't we do three different kind of meals a day? Why can't we give the elementary kids a choice? Why don't they come in and get put one thing on the menu? They don't have to just get one thing on the menu. They can get two or three choices. Let the kids pick what they want. And with the CEP, which is a nice thing, I know I know some some uh, principals might think, oh, it's going to slow the line down to three items. The CEP, you do not have to range the kids through the POS system. The kids go through, you click them. You click the kids through, that's it. No names, no nothing, no applications, no nothing. They walk through, get their meals, click them, they go through, click them, they go through, at the end, you tally them up, put them in the system. Um, we'll just say, Maple Hurst, we serve 380 lunches a day, you put them in, you're done. That's it, that's it, end of the game. That's it, that's it. I don't care if it was Johnny Smith, Jimmy Johnson, I don't care who it was. Doesn't, don't need a name, just a clicker, that's all it is. So, it's pretty basic, so. Um, the thing about this too, individualized breakfast, where the kids can go through and pick up what they want in the morning for breakfast. You know, we do give them two or three options a day for breakfast, but next year it'll be more. Why can't we do more? I mean, even the high school level, um, you know, the high school right now will serve probably 45 breakfasts a day out of 700 students. There's got to be a reason for it. There's something like to get out of bed. I get it. I get it. <laughs> but you know, truthfully, I mean. We need to build on that. We're going to build on next year. We are going to build that. Uh, we're really build on that. Go. Okay. A couple, a couple other things we're doing this year. So you know, right now we're doing the CACMP. So you guys don't know if you know this or not. Uh, pleasant. We're doing the after school um, child and adult care group program with the Boys and Girls Club, where our kids, a lot of them from uh, Maplehurst come over with the Boys and Girls Club. We're giving them a free dinner program. It's kind of neat. Um, the Boys and Girls Club was doing it, but it was it had some hiccups to it, so we decided we're going to do it. I mean, I've done it before in the past with other districts, and I thought, why don't, why don't we do it? I mean, that's, that's what we do. I mean, let us, let us take care of it. So we did. So now we did that, and then. Uh, uh, Mr. Bauman got me with drama, and then we're going to do the other ones too. If other people in the district need something, just you know, reach out. Just take care of us. Take care of our students. I mean, that's what we're here for. If they need something, just give out us. We'll take care of them. I mean, that's what we do. I so mean, that second bullet point is our middle school kids who are traveling to Main Street. So right. that's where they're going. So you have that kind of time after school. They have time to eat prior to <clears throat> starting with the, uh, yep. the Main Street. 17. Teacher slash yep. 17 of them every day. Yep. Monday through Thursday. They do. Monday through Thursday. So the 27th, I think it's 27th. So, yep. Um, next year, we need to expand on it. Like, they get to go into all the schools. We like to talk about doing the study tables in the schools. Um, we can do it with sports. We can do it with uh, the band. We can do it in the summertime, too, this year. We do all kinds of things. So, we can open that door up. Big opportunities in the district. So, um, it's good for the kids. It saves the parents a ton of money. Does save, save a ton of money for the kids. Um, so summer, I'm looking at doing a summer food program. I don't think Doros ever did that before. Done it before. Um, I am going to do. We're going to do one. We're gonna, so give me a bottle. We are going to do one. Um, we're going to do the boys and girls club, of course. But we're also going to look at doing distribution of non congregated meals to the area kids. Um, it can't just be Norwalk City School students. It's got to be any. Children in the area, which is okay. Um, 
So now calculated is where um, parents can come up. I'm going to get a waiver for the parents can come up and get it. Say, hey, you know, I have two students or I have two kids. I um, need two meals for them. Pick them up and go. That's all they have to do. And we just tally them up and we reimburse for it. No cost in the district. So, yeah, kind of need. So I know with something like that, COVID, um, they're looking at going back a little bit that way this year. So, you know, a lot of, especially looking at our numbers, are we're at 56%, you know, um, pre reduced right now. So, uh, a lot of <coughs> districts are going with that. I don't, I don't think North ever did it or something, but we haven't, no, never. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Kind of neat, so. um, questions? A um, couple things uh, before you ask for questions. A um, couple things I know I'm working on. I know Mr. Bar Bauman has talked to me a little bit. We tried it. We're working on getting a grant with the National Dairy Council about getting some smoothie makers at all the schools. Actually, uh, I put the grant in over a uh, Eclipse day. <laughs> and, uh, um, I told him I'd reach out to Jan Diamond. She is on the Ohio National or Ohio Dairy Council. She actually reached out to me today, and she told us that we have a really good option of doing it, getting it because we're going on the CEP program. So we're on that top level right now. And um, if we don't get it, she said that she has local funds in the state of Ohio from the Ohio Dairy Council that she would help us get something for them. So what we're going to do is put get smoothie makers in all the schools, all the elementary dairies. So every day they have smoothies, if not every day, but at least every other day. So the kids can have it every day for the breakfast. So if you need to do it, so, so sort of reach out our uh, resources as much as we can. So um, funds aren't there. So we're going to reach out so we can get the funds. So we so, spoke on pizza ovens as well, Brad. Okay. Um, we have one pizza at the high school. We, I've been begging the treasurer. I think she's going to let us get one at the middle school. I think I did say <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah. She, she said we can. She said yes. We're going to put a pizza oven at the middle school this summer. Um, this is after pizza. Yeah, 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 yeah. But um, I think it'll be a big benefit to the middle school. I know the kids are gonna just enjoy that a lot. School, I don't know. I just love that little. I love the high school pizza. It's great. They make the pizzas by scratch. It's it's different. Instead of buying the pizzas, I mean frozen and instead of through it. Um. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to actually. I know I'm talking off subject and mumbling, but. I'd like to actually one day make the pizzas to the middle school and put them in a box and ship them to the elementary, it's like delivery service for the kids. So they have all delivered to them and they can just serve them like that to the kids one day, you know, so it can be so so you have like an all even the high school send out the high school and ship around. So yeah, that's a mm -hmm. goal. So we have all kinds of things. So told you guys, it's it's just huge things we're gonna do. So I just I really enjoy it. I really enjoy it, doesn't it? Um it takes what is it six and a half minutes to make one pizza it's a conveyor belt so it's pretty quick it's pretty soon happy to so um, yeah it's pretty neat it's pretty neat yeah it's pretty it's pretty quick I, I have a question yeah you said that it's going to be easy they're not going to have to put a pin number in the students won't have to and the mm -hmm. um whatever you're just going to click them through yep i know high school kids eat like they've never eaten ever yep so what are you going to do when they want to come back for seconds shouldn't have to come back for seconds they will here's what it is they usually all go up at one time to get it. They should know who they are. Usually the uh, um, staff members will know who they are. They're pretty good about that, who they are. The cashiers will know what they went through or not. So do they, but if they go back for seconds, is there a charge then? Yeah, they'll be charged for it. They have to, okay. they so have to be. Okay, so yeah. there will have to be some kind of a... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, but you can't, you're really not, you're not supposed to bring them out at all. You can't really do that. There's no, you're really not supposed to. You're supposed to do some kind of other, like a tally system or use some kind of a clicker system to do it. If you don't, you'll never get the kids through fast enough because they're so popular. The, the participation is going to be so high, and it does get it does get really high. I mean, it's huge. I know. Um, so how will you keep track then of the kids who? Because buy here, here's one, what happens. Buy extra. Uh, I, I, well, what do you mean buy extra? They come back up and buy extra. Yeah. The kids, they're they're the pretty good about hungry, it. They come back through. Um, they're pretty good about it, though. I think. I mean, you know, from my previous employer, I mean, we never had an issue with it. We've never, I've never had an issue with it. I've been out there many times at the high school that, but I mean, um, yeah, because once they see that you're going to have 500 or however many, 200 students at each lunch might go up and get or whatever, 150 of them at a time, they're going to go up that time and get their lunch because they're not going to stay around a week for the end of it up there. They want to get their lunch because it's going to be fast. So they have to go up there. Yeah. Hi, I have another question. Yeah. Just regarding when you talked about the potential summer program yeah. that you wanted to yep. do, um, how would that work? I shouldn't say how would that affect 
normally our cafeteria staff don't work during the summer. So would you then be having some of our cafeteria staff help with that? Or okay. how are you planning on just There's going to be a sign-up sheet for that for summer. There always is for summer help. Just like, just like you do if you had like cleaning for custodial. You have custodial, you have probably painters, you have stuff like that. So, yep. So but is it going to be, are they going to be considered summer help? Or are they going to be considered like... I know we, have, we, haven't, we haven't figured that one out yet. We got a couple months for that, so I don't know yet. It would still be part of the cafeteria. Right, right. They, they, they would still come out of the food service fund. Right, right. It wouldn't be kind of a general fund at all. It has to become out of our, the, the 06 fund, the food service fund. So. But it would be like a voluntary thing. Right, it wouldn't, you can't manage, right? You can't give everybody, it wouldn't be contracted either. It wouldn't be contracted. So you can't contract something like that. Because some people have vacations in the summertime, you can't make somebody do that. You can't And we, when, when I was at when I was at my other place, we had it for ten years, and we always had volunteers all the time. It, 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 they look for extra week here, week there, a couple days here, a couple days there. You just gotta work the schedule out. And the, it's nice for extra pay. They like it. They have flexibility in their schedule. If I want to go on vacation on July fourth, I don't have to work that week or whatever. And I can work the next week or work, you know, two days this week, two days this week, and, and we work it out so it. If somebody can't work on a Thursday, well, we, we make it up meals for that for three days in a row or whatever, and we can for the last day. So the next day we have it covered, so we have it the next day. So we always figure something out. So there's a math behind it. It's craziness, but it's math. I was seeing some real world problems here, lady. Yeah. For your, when he started there, I was like, the kids should have stayed yeah. and figured this math out. Yeah. 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 Smartest in the room there. Brad, speak to the furniture because you spoke before. We were unsuccessful landing the grant to make changes <laughs> immediately within the next year at Norwalk High School. But obviously, you're a critical part in the ad visioning of the new building and what that cafeteria is going to look like for a PK, a K-8 facility. You're wanting to make changes in that whole environment, what Norwalk High School cafeteria feels like. Speak to that, please. Okay. Um, the high school we're looking at um, changed a little bit to a little bit more like the uh, dining theme, a cafe theme. Um, Tables, different tables, not um, attached chairs to the tables, like chairs that slide out, booths, stuff like that. We're round tables, we're tables, the same amount of, of seating capacity each of them in the whole room, maybe a little bit more. We, uh, um, the grant didn't go through, we didn't get it through ODE, that's okay. So I tried actually with Huron County too, I did try with one of those, but I went to a coalition meeting and they gave me a couple names local grants maybe some local funding maybe I can get so I'm gonna work on them too and see who can help us out. So I've worked on that one too. But, um, it's nice to have that. I mean a change I, I hate bringing my thirties to play but I love I love because I love changing things. I love doing that for the kids because it's always good for them. But change things doing that because it gives the kids more or student I can see the kids students more of ownership of where they're gonna be eating at all this time. And you know it's it's funny because my previous, the, the place would be trash, the floors would be trash, the tables would be trash. But when we changed the whole the model, everything changed. Everything was picked up, the floor was picked up, the tables were cleared off, and the right table there, no trash on the tables, the trays left, no milk cartons left, everything was spotless. It's like, why? Because they had ownership to the building parts and the tables and chairs. Because they knew it was something different. You know, the booths, we were worried about, you know, shoving gum inside the booths or something. No, we did it because they knew that, you know, we don't take care of it, we're not going to have it. It's not going to last. And the question is, why do you shove crap on the there? It's not going to happen. So, it's okay. but yeah, but that's our vision. So, yeah, um, I, I, when I tried for the grant, I tried for both. I tried for tables, chairs, and new lighting too, because I thought the lighting would be changed too. Working on that, so I know, I know about all the lighting. Uh, it does need to change for sure. So um, I don't know if I can envision that, but. You're promising 250 to 300 kids yeah. could still be seated, yeah. even in that arrangement, whether it be high, yep. lows, high, low, high, high restaurant low, high feel yep. Yep. that people are used to. Your fours, your six, your eight, or whatever it be. Um, we went with the board. Most flights came out and actually gave a couple of drawings of what they thought of. And the far wall, and the high boys along the whole wall. It's going to need a whole like, counter space all around the wall. It's going to need high board tables. Low boys, high board risers, um, everything away from the murals and stuff like that. Nothing against the walls or the, or the, um, the uh, 
Uh, yeah, the case. So nothing against the case in the course I like. There's always going to be a 36 inch gap between the tables too because of fire, you know, fire rule, fire uh, guidelines, and stuff like that. But yeah, there was always going to be seamings there. Plus, you could probably add some more, they said, too, if there's enough room for it. So, um, the tables would not have been, uh, they, they would have been movable but not movable. Let's put it that way. The tables cannot be just folded up and tucked away. They have to actually put on a roller and pushed out because you don't want to make them that mobile with anybody to move them. You can have a parent come in and pick them up and say you don't want that. You want to make sure our staff are the ones that are actually move them and not have somebody come off the street. And, okay, well we need to move these tables. First the sidewalk move them. We don't want that. We'll make sure we take them out. So, so, so especially if someone's having to clean they can pick them up and just pick them up real quick, slide them on, tuck them away. So, so consideration we talked about boys and girls club. There is consideration of even like venue placement with Ben, you know, for this past year at Pleasant. Um, serious consideration right now, nothing final, but looking at Noah Middle School, and you look at that space, you look at the beautiful gym, you look at four, you look at the cafeteria, you look at probably of all the six buildings that has a primo space for a cap for a kitchen setting. So when you're saying like we are the supplier for our own kids in that space, there is really strong consideration why Boys and Girls Club would make sense at Norwalk Middle School. Mm -hmm. And obviously when we're talking future plans, that might have a lot of life there as well. So that's being considered, uh, it could be as soon as the summer program. Yeah, I don't care where you put them on the <laughs> I don't care where you do. I mean, make it easier for you. Mr. I don't care what, I know, I don't care what school you go to. They'll be, they'll be taken care of, so no matter what we do. So, so what, what, is, you, what is your vision for the K-3 program? What, how, how much will so many little kids and but you would be able to have a kitchen that you could serve and do a lot more with that would assume when you can now. My my vision would be just like the intermediate building that I put together at my previous two. Um, in the back having like a baker's area in the back, making our stuff by scratch, semi scratch cooking, stuff like that for the kids, and stuff like that. That's what I want. I mean I think that's the best for the kids. Do the stuff the old with them. Sort of the old way, but also the new way. You take the modern technology and the old technology, combine them together, and it gives you both experiences at the same time. That's the best. I mean, that's I think it's really good to do. Just it gives it, it gives the students a new technology. It gives them new new meaning, new things to see. I mean, with the new ovens, new technology. I mean, we have the ones like the rational ovens at the high school, at the middle school, the computerized ovens where they cook, they do everything we need to clean themselves. But those are just, they just do everything. I mean, they do, and that's what we need. We need to use them and support them. I mean, I know I've talked to Brad a few times too about, I mean, instead of buying our stuff like our pulled pork already made, why can't we make our pulled pork? Why can't we buy pork roast for a dollar seven and a pound? Why can't we cook it for seven hours in the oven and cook it and cook it down? We can do, we have the technology, we have the ability to make. The recipes we can make the standardized recipes we do now we actually write them up state's okay with it as long as we write them up we have what we do we can do that technology i mean why can't we use raw chicken we can we just don't but we're going to i mean that's that's the goal that's what's going to happen i mean like like when you run out of commodity items like where you are this year every school in ohio is right now right now what are they doing we're scrambling we're scrambling what we're going to do so what we're gonna do, we're gonna start cooking by scratch and we're gonna have to. We're gonna have to learn, we have to do that. You know, we have no choice. That's what you do. I mean, let's go back to your way. That's what that's what you do. But with preliminary planning, you're clearly looking at one large kitchen area, and then potentially that next question would be, what's the service of kids look like? Is that one space, two spaces, and that becomes you have large areas, and does that you have like two different kind of dining areas? So, you know, I know with our community, like the greater Norwalk community, I'm a concern, like I don't want my first grader with an eighth grader. I don't like those questions, and that could be the timing of schedules and potentially having spaces, but we see as a primary, like one kitchen that's unbelievable that may be servicing. I, I think it would be one kitchen with two areas. Mm -hmm. I, I think I think the students in Norwalk are, are okay with that. I, I think they're easy okay with that. I think the students here are, can adapt to that. I really do. Going around the different schools and seeing how the students react, how they are with all the other students. I mean, I can see that. I can see it. I mean, going into the middle school and you see little kids and younger kids, seven, eight year olds in there, 
You don't see anything going on. You don't see anything wrong going on with an eighth grader with a seven year old. You know, you don't see that. So it's like, why wouldn't it? I mean, why couldn't it be on one section and one section in this room? Central kitchen cooking for them. You could. You could. I mean, it makes it does make sense. It really does. Then you have everything in your hands at one time. So if something you need it from one side of the kitchen to the other, one side you can borrow or use and yeah. Why can't you give it to all the students? Why are you just gonna you know do it for one or the other, just do it all for one? Yeah. Huge. I'm excited. Next year is gonna be a totally turning point. It's gonna say right now it's gonna be different, totally different. So we'll probably have our menus out for next year, probably by July 30th. So they're gonna be out right early. So because all the new uh, the product lists come out in July, mm -hmm. so we know what's going on. So we we'll work on taking menus out and having the parents be excited about it. We put out public side up when you guys say we can about getting the CEP out. So I'm sure it's going to be out now. I mean, I'm sure it's going to be out there, but it's going to be huge for parents. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a big life changer for them. We put out putting money in all the time for your kids, putting money online, mm -hmm. all the good stuff. So a lot of operational decisions still need to be made. Yeah. And we're yep. talking yep. staffing yep. and how principals, teachers are yep. going to handle when kids in the whole, are kids yep. going to be eating in a classroom setting if I'm an elementary student? Am I going to be in that space? What does that look like? So while, you know, this is nothing but exciting news for our community, right. our parents, our kids, there's things that need to be figured out the next month, month and a half yep. as what that flow looks like. So we're talking like your cafeteria, you the cafeteria, we're not, in 15 minutes, we're not playing basketball anymore. We do now. Says that. Yeah. Oh, you still you still get in there. You mean, you mean talking, breakfast? You mean? No, I'm saying you're talking with the furniture that you're cleaning. It's not going to be moved so they can have kids that in there. You mean in high school? That was just high school. Okay. There's just like nothing. Gosh, in high school. <laughs> like, no, 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 no. I no, 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 see somebody kick somebody out. No, I'm just saying. So that that's just high school. Yeah, just like, yeah, yeah, okay. just like, all right. Elementary, yeah. so it should be on the time. So, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I just can't say, Mr. Doc, you are just amazing. Like, we are just so blessed to have you in this district. And you're doing it. I mean, honestly, I just I hope people are really realizing what you're doing here. I think my children are going to be questioning why I don't make more things from scratch at home. Oh, uh, that's going to be Sorry. a difficult conversation. But no, I just, I, I just. The press is not even the strong enough word. Thank you for your passion and everything you do. You sleep at night? <laughs> sometimes, sometimes I get. Yeah, you know, usually get about, sometimes I think about three o'clock. So I'm up in the morning sometimes. So. I mean, I do enjoy it. I, just, I don't know. I just have four, I mean, four years. I just, just the program itself, but then to do summer and everything else, I just, I don't know. I don't have words. Thank you. I told uh, I told Brad, it's like I will be here to retire, so I'm not leaving the district. I do. No, I, I, I really, I really, I really do enjoy the district. I really do. I really do. I like the kids, the uh, administration. I mean, the teachers, the staff. I mean, it's all there. It really is. I mean, it's it's it's, it's one of a kind. Oh, no, we're not letting you meet. It really is. All right. Oh, Thank here he is. I was following along on the. On oh, yeah. Okay. Good. Good. All right. Good job. Thank you so much. Sorry, no, it's not. Okay. <laughs> 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 All right, Joyce. Treasure, please. Okay, Ben's getting us set up over here. Nope, okay. Wow. <clears throat> so, first off, we have the minutes from the regular meeting, March 13th. Those were posted. Then we have the March 2024 financial reports. A couple items to note there. Um, basically, it was the, the final payment of the taxes came in. This is the first half of tax year 2023. The second half of tax year 2023 will be in August. Sorry, we're still getting set up. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to rush you. You can take your time. Okay. Um, 
Okay, and I also want to point out, when we're talking about the property taxes, again, I want to point out that this is um, the first time that in Norwalk City School District, all of our taxpayers' property taxes went down. So when did that ever happen? They went down. Might not have been high a lot, maybe $20 to $50, but everybody's went down. Unless you like build a new addition or something, then obviously that's a little different. But, so that's a really important thing. It shows um, how our district is growing because as we grow and more um, valuation is added, it spreads the burden out so people pay less. So that's really great. So I just wanted to point that out again. So we're um, $37,000, $633 to the good in the, the class one property, which is your residential, agriculture, and commercial. We're $66,178 to the good in the public utility, tangible, personal property, um, which if we had a pipeline, it would be in that category. We waited good, but we don't. But this still covers like um, any sort of public utility, gas lines, electric lines, substations, any of that. So. Um, between the two categories, we were about $9,000 over my forecasted amount, which was really good. And remember, we're comparing first half to last year's first half. The total amount we collected was $8.9 million in property taxes. So that was that was pretty impressive. Um, next, we have our... Oops, Get your mouse back over to the right. There you go. Over to the right. There you go. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? I right? Sorry. I keep saying that. I'm tracing how this works. You're good. No, so um, the next part was our um, audited financial report, and everyone was able to come to the exit conference with the auditors. I was really happy for that. And I just wanted to show you that although we are not able to get the Auditor of State Award because we do a cash basis financial statements, we did receive the highest achievement in open and transparent government, four stars out of four. So I was really proud of my office and for you, my board members, because you are involved in this too, by doing your required training as a public official, we were able to get four stars out of four, which we did last year also. So. This is really, this is good. Um, so I want to show everybody that we got the certificate. Four out of four. <laughs> four out of four. So, and of course it's posted on um, the website under my page, and the financial statements are there, just like every monthly report is posted there. Next, we have the League and Main Street Boiler Replacement Project. This is, we've been talking about um, replacing the boilers for quite some time, Main Street. I think we went out for bid six years ago and were unsuccessful there. So this time what we're doing is we're using energy optimizers, which Dan and I have worked together um, for different projects we did with clocks in the buildings and um, some lighting projects and different things. We did a grant last year, which unfortunately we didn't get, but it was, um, it was a good learning experience. So what they do with energy optimizers is they are part of a consortium, so that it takes care of the bidding but we're still able to use Walter's boiler, who is who we normally use for all of our boiler repair, so they're familiar with our building. And we were dithering back and forth, were we gonna do this or not, because these buildings hopefully will not be here in a few years. But we've had two warm winters, and hopefully by next year we'll be back to a normal, nice, cold, snowy winter like it should be. And then the boilers will be running all the time and probably will break down. We don't have enough room to put one grade or two grades somewhere else, so we do need to fix it. But if we do demolish these buildings, which of course there's always a possibility somebody might want to use them, but if we do have to demolish them, we will be able to pull these boilers out and resell them. They'll still be in good shape. New boilers will be able to sell them. So it's not like we're spending this money and then we're going to throw it away shortly because they will be reusable. So I think that's important. Um, we'll use our permanent improvement money for this. Together, it's $544,550 for the two boilers, which was pretty good. The last boiler project we did was the middle school, and it came in at about $350,000. So these are a little different kinds of boilers. They're a little bit smaller. We will use permanent improvement, and which brings in around half a million each year. So we're covered between this year and next year without cutting in too close for any other projects we might need to do. Which is another reason it would be so important to get us into that new pre-K-8 building because then we will have less maintenance costs like boilers like this. 
Finally, we have donations thanks to Fair Publishing and NASA for the Eclipse glasses that we had. We were able to pass these out to all of our students, staff, and anybody who walked in our building. So that was really great. So we could enjoy the Eclipse. And finally, the North class of 1976, we had um, an alumni who donated quite a few art books to the district. That's all I have. Uh, we have a motion to accept all items under treasurer. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Norris? Yes. Mrs. Burkett? Yes. Mrs. Crawford? Yes. Mr. Gonzalez? Yes. Mr. Ritzenthaler? Yes. Several resignations. Kathy Luke is a Bill and A longtime uh, employee of the North State School District. Uh, students went here, her own kids, and just a great person, and we will miss her. Um, Kimberly uh, Vasquez Santos, she is our ELLA. And she was uh, finished effective March 20th, um, so several weeks ago. Number two, we have employment of Lindsay Bruner. This is the replacement uh, for Michelle Weiss at Main Street. Um, had a chance to do second round interviews with her, very impressed. And I know the staff and counselors and everybody who's worked with her have been highly impressed. And you think about her position to come into mid year, um, not having been in a school, not knowing kids, not knowing teachers, and she's doing a stellar job. So. Very pleased, very uh, fortunate to have her to join the team. Uh, three is employment of Mary Beth Simon as an educational aide. That is at Pleasant Elementary. Uh, four, we have school bus driver training for Tammy Brandt. Uh, we have three listed here for administrative contracts that would extend until the 26-27 school year. Uh, Mr. Pat Kenya, who is still here, Norwalk High School principal. Elena Perez, who's our DLL coordinator. And then last is our uh, bus slash diesel mechanic in Anthony Ward. We have uh, quite a listing here, um, the different linked contracts of our teaching staff. We have our list on 6A of our one-year contracts being offered. Um, B is our two-year contracts being offered, um, as you'll see indicated by the list there. We have several um, on C with three-year contracts, and then the uh, next list is our continuing contracts. We also have a substitute in Rebecca Carlson. Um, she's effective date was March 19th, 2024. Special contracts for Norwalk Middle School. Um, Stephanie Osborne is head coach. And again, she's at Norwalk Middle School. She was actually a trucker grad, cheered for a very long time at Bowling Green. So a lot of experience, brings a lot of knowledge. So you couple her with our high school uh, cheerleading coaches. Uh, we have a pretty strong, uh, strong team in that department. It probably indicates why we had the success we did this year at the high school level too. So that is what I have for personnel. We have a motion to accept all items under personnel. So moved. Second? Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Gonzalez? Yes. Mrs. Burnett? Yes. Mrs. Crawford? Yes. Mr. Norris? Yes. Mr. Ritzenthal? Yes. All right, items for approval. Number one, we are working to uh, Round up some funding to uh, send our students and advisors, coaches to Dallas, Texas. So it's an exciting time um, to send our kids an opportunity like this. So Mr. Whaley and Mrs. Webb are currently doing that. And we have good funding coming in. Like I said, Norwalk, we are blessed because we have so many people willing to write checks, businesses, organizations to make that happen. So you can imagine sending 15 plus people there. That's a lot of money. And uh, we're going to get to that point because we're not going to tell our kids no that opportunity has been presented and they earned that right to be there so the reason it's in front of you is because it is clearly an overnight trip <laughs> uh a2 agreement with huron county public health um, preschool for screening health and nursing services three is an agreement with huron county board of dd effective for this coming year agreement with north point and a4 um, and that's our shared cost mrs dupont and myself met with the north point individuals and walked through all of our expenses that we uh um, and services that we get through North Point and the, uh, and the cost that follow that. Uh, five is the agreement with services for Lorain County Educational Service Center, and that contract is for next year. And then lastly, is student insurance that would be offered for the 24-25 school year. So that completes superintendent items. Okay. We have a motion to accept all items under superintendent report. So moved. Second? Second. Uh, any discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Norris? Yes. Mrs. Burkett? Yes. Mrs. Crawford? Yes. Mr. Ritzenthaler? Yes. Can I forget Mr. Gonzalez? 
Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, he made it. <laughs> 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 you guys didn't do well in your uh, game, so Joyce is skipping with us. Uh, any board discussions, comments, legislative reports? We have some breaking news. So our most successful girls basketball coach here at Norwalk High School has stepped down. So I wanted you to know this. So several hours ago, Coach Manlet has decided that uh, coaching for now is uh, he's going to move on. Obviously, you know, he's got kids playing. He's got a lot of activities to go to. So he's going to continue on and remain as a, as a um, teacher at Norwalk High School. But that part of it, so you look at the time of anybody who's a coach, advisor, and the amount of time that takes that is a lot so like i said you look at most successful because you can look at wins you can look at the district level performance and obviously the very fun took the community on the ride last year and the girls that we were you know one win away from being a date for the state championship for the runner-up but uh so anyways that was several hours ago so you know you have to have a you know have a lot of time to contemplate that postseason because you need to think about it before you make a rash decision because you know the time and all those efforts but it took time so he has been thinking on that for several weeks now, and uh, he came to that uh, conclusion today. So Mr. Schlatter uh, spoke to me a couple hours ago, and uh, he had a chance. And the reason I'm saying that now is he's had a chance to speak to all his girls. So his girls know that for all those that are coming back as well as the seniors. So obviously that's the critical message that needs to be delivered first is to the kids. Um, the other part, which is exciting, is our Hall of Fame recognition of our Hall of Fame, our football state champions. <laughs> from several years ago, so back to 74. So they are gonna be honored on September 6th, which is the first home game. That is, I believe the third game on the season. I think we're away for the first two, September 6th against Toledo Rogers. We'll be honoring them. So we'll be having festivities at the game and then that will follow um, with that group at the Eagles as well. So a different type of celebration from our 2014 state basketball champions but very fitting for a, a group of guys that are aged probably 66 to 68 now. So mm -hmm. a lot of quality people that some are, are far away and some have been uh, remaining in this community since then. So, and a lot of you know who those individuals are. So that's some, uh, some breaking news and exciting news for our Hall of Fame, our next class here. And that'll be done here in the fall of 24. And then our plan is to do getting back to the regular rotation of individuals in the winter of 2025 for Hall of Fame inductions. So that is all I have. Good news and terrible news. Well, I wish him the best. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's, he's, I know he makes a huge impact on the, the coaching. So. <clears throat> Prepare for that. Um, I had something I, I wanted to bring up, and not that it has to be decided tonight, uh, but I don't know if anyone saw there was a discussion about um, unpaid school fees, and the consequence of that is students. Um, diplomas help with help. So I don't think that's just a Baltimore City School District thing. It's a many school district um, consequence of when a student has fees that can build up throughout their whole, you know, time in the district. If they're unpaid, um, that's what they do. They withhold the with, um, diploma until it's paid. Um, I just wanted to see what the board thought about maybe trying a different policy. Uh, I don't know exactly what it could be, but I have to agree, I don't necessarily love that that's the, um, the consequence when these are students who are have no binding, you know, under 18, they don't make these decisions and they shouldn't necessarily be penalized by what their parents did or, did or didn't know or didn't pay. I know that the district does a lot to let these parents know throughout their whole time here that they have these balances for whatever they have it from. I think the district already has done so much to try to take any kind of financial burden off parents' plates. So I don't know what the last time we had fees, just it's been a very long time. It's been years since they had um, school fees. And with the CEP program going forward, we won't have any school fees. I mean, so there's four years and free lunches mm -hmm. and breakfast that we were able to do again because of this administration. Um, because of our participation as i say because of our support of our uh, well, boosters, boosters continue to come you know so far we haven't had any of those fees so i i think that we're doing as much as we can on the public school level in our administration I'm, i can't take any credit whatever what who is up here and who is running our district is 
done as much as I think anyone could expect or do to help take off fees, but I just don't love that this falls on the student. I'm, a, I'm totally against the, the children being uh, penalized for something that they have no control over. Um, I think they should be given their diploma and we figure out something whether we waive the fees. Uh, obviously, we haven't had fees. What, why do they need to collect that money now for stuff that we haven't been doing for the last four years? And I don't know what the rules are, Joyce. I don't know if we even have that capability of waiving things, but I do believe that the responsibility should go on who it should go to, which is the parents, or, yeah. personally. So, I mean, I think we've done a lot to waive these going forward, but these are some of this is fees from what I understand, and I don't know if there's student lunch fees, there's also college courses that you can sign up for that is not mandatory, but you chose to do. There's all these different things that can add up, and if, I just, I don't know. I don't think to me, and maybe it's any different than being responsible for your child's medical bills or anything else that your child has accrued. And that's the parent's responsibility and that would go to a collection or go to something that, that the parents would have to have a consequence for, not the student. I'm not saying it's a perfect world, but I think we're already doing what we can to control to not have the fees, but there's gonna be some things that are out of our control, but as a parent, we we have the responsibility. And I'm hoping that if the parent has more of the consequence than the student, I think some of these fees, we already have programs in place that could have prevented them. Like they could we have 50% almost that qualified for free lunches. But I think some people just don't want to take the time to fill out the form. But maybe if <laughs> it is more of their responsibility, that would have to happen. So I'm not saying it's a perfect world, but I do when that was kind of brought up, I didn't realize it, and I just don't, I don't love it. So I don't know what the board is. But I think like right now, the high school senior class has anywhere near a $5,000 balance of unpaid lunches. And that's on lunches. Um, because of lunch, sir, because the lunch is a federal program and we do re receive reimbursements, the board can't waive the fees on the lunch fees. I mean, we could see if we could collect them from, I mean, donations or who, who might do something like that, but that part can't be waived. I mean, the general fund fees, of course, that's totally different, but food service, it can't be waived. It would have to be paid by somebody or the general fund or something. That part. So is that just the senior class is 5,000? That was do, just the senior class. An right. idea of school-wide? School-wide, what we own, quite a bit, yeah. Like 20, <laughs> $81,000 in the whole. $81,000 in the whole from K through K through 12 right now, as of today. And that's unpaid fees. Yep. School fees. Yep. No, unpaid lunch fees. Just breakfast lunch program. It's just lunch. It's not regular. The charges. Our, our memo says that the home school district charges is mailed because I can guarantee that nine and a half out of 10 kids at the high school that get one in their hand, toss it in the trash before it ever goes home. So I don't know ever at every grade level, but I mean, I personally have had emails when I, if I, you know, before I learned how to turn the alerts on mm -hmm. that says your kids at five dollars for lunches, so I get email mm -hmm. alerts. But I know that if there was when we had dues, you had to pay them to get your grade card. But now everybody has access to progress book, so there's really mm -hmm. just not a lot we can do. To, I don't know, to make it more apparent that there's a bill. That uh, the peace charm thing is also widely ignored by parents as well. You know, that's the notification of peace chart um, app. Maybe I, I know. I don't know. Maybe you, Mr. Kenyon. What is? I know that there's a process as they get closer to graduation where you're sending alerts to. I don't know exactly. If there's yeah, I mean, it, it goes calls all the way until the end. I think that some of them have large fees if they failed multiple courses on their CCP courses. Um, so that could be a, you know, if the kid blows off a bunch of classes that we paid for as taxpayers have to pay for that, um, those courses. And those are the, the larger fees we deal with. Um, and I know there's legislation we have to follow. They, they don't ever get, take away the ability to have the transcript, the information sent out. 
other than their diploma, because that's the only thing that we've been able to hold over their head when they owe, you know, maybe a couple thousand in failed courses fees. Okay. But there is even it, it is. It's always conflict at the end because they they've gotten all their notification and not paid anything, and you know, <laughs> we've been trying to collect fees that they've owed over time, and some of them go back, and some of them are as recent as they failed a recent college course, and uh, you know the tuition for those can be you know, quite excessive. And when I started, Mr. Kenya, you had students who didn't walk. They didn't walk. They didn't get the celebration of. And that changed years ago where they're going through. So there's not a person that essentially knows that because they're being handed something. Now, is it thinner than another package? But that's being given. So that kid gets that experience because that you can't take away. But that's what we're talking. Some of those expenses are far different than someone who doesn't handle his or her business in a classroom setting and then saying we're going to go to our community and say someone write a check because he can speak to michelle sanders um, jenny flynn can speak to what that person is not doing because all those warnings have been giving to that student and then saying you don't take care of your business in the classroom setting welcome to the real world because that's college you know we're not going to walk you along and hold hands that's what you signed up for so when you fail a college course that's when you get the big ticket items which, like I said, that conversation is far different than yeah, potentially what we're speaking here. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. And that's elective, too. And, and everybody yeah. goes into it understanding that this is a college course elective and it's not for There's a financial piece to it. Right. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's just something that after I saw it, it brought to my attention. And I, I don't think that we're doing anything that's not, you know, across the board how things are done. And like he, Mr. Kalu just said, we're not letting somebody not walk. They earn that graduation. They earn that you know, diploma. I don't know. I just thought we're doing a whole lot of other things to help, and I would like to see if there's a different way of doing this. I know other districts have taken parents to collection. I mean, our small claims, there's always that option. But. <laughs> yeah, and it's not that I want to try to penalize somebody, but if they're, I just feel like we're not, we're not doing the right, uh, or we're not holding the right person accountable or, you know, at the end of it. Can I, can I say at the beginning of the school year, the first month I started, we sent out 1,200 letters to parents that owed money and uh, put a burn on us for up the top. So we paid like probably 600 something dollars just for postage. That's not even including $200 just for the envelopes that we printed. And by having paper the paper, and then we had to buy ink too for the machine. I know it sounds crazy, but all that no, yeah. we had all that printing to do. So after we did that, we had no response back from any parents at all, no response back at all. So then we decided to do the email system to pay school, so we did it. So no response back at all, because they have a system on there. So my administrative assistant, Carrie, decided to hook up with pay school too, and now she has it on Google. So she sends them out all the time. Every week, she'll send an email to them through the Google and through, and through pay schools. Well, when she does that, it logs it on the, on the Google account, on ours, their name. Every time it goes in, when they open it, it logs. They open that email, so we know they open that email up. They read it, but no response back. So I mean, I have some parents that have like ten times they've opened the email, no response. You just let it, they let it go, go, and go. It's like you can't, you can't, we can't force them. I mean, there's so right, right, right. unless we make some kind of legal this action. This program yeah. is going to make a huge difference, and, and I, I, that's why I said I can't say enough about it. Uh, and yeah. we can only do what we can do. And there's been different years that we've had for lunches. But I also saw some comments. We're never going to not let a kid eat, you right, know. Right, so right, exactly. I mean, that's just never going to happen. So parents have to understand. We we don't know that they packed a lunch. If they walk up there, they're going to eat, and we're we're never going to treat them differently or not let them eat because of their balance account. So we all, as parents, have to be responsible for what we're our kids are doing at school and what what bills they have, as we would at home. I mean, there's no difference. But I just I don't know. I wanted your guys' feedback. I just want to see if there's a different way we could do this. And like I said, I don't think we're doing anything. We've already made changes that we're not doing anything wrong, except for I just, I would rather it didn't touch the kid at all. I would agree. I do think it's worth exploring options. You know, I suspect people aren't paying not because they're unaware they have the debt. I suspect they're not paying because they don't have the funds to pay it. And, and I would agree to hold a kid accountable for that seems, you know, seems short. And some of them might not have the funds, but we have the program if we just get them to help fill out some of the stuff so that they don't have the burden. Right. 
but it won't go away if we don't do something. Is there some kind of like payment plan option? Because like if they're getting some kind of notification, like, oh, you owe like $300, like not everybody can afford mm -hmm. that up right away. Like, you know, we yeah. can break it down. Is that already in place? Those are set. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Are we thinking of <laughs> Okay. <laughs> And, and like parents are, are aware of that. From, employees too. <laughs> from like high school because those calls are being made all the time. So I'll say, for example, Ms. Chapin, she's making contacts like I can only do ten bucks a week. Okay. So that's the only thing that I can give to ten bucks a week. We will we've done that. We're okay. setting up ten bucks mm -hmm. per week for X number of weeks. Yeah, so that's part of the message of like, hey, you own Absolutely. This, you know, but yeah. we can do a and that's what we do too. Same thing. Who's the same thing? We do same exact thing. When they call and say, hey. Can you tell me about my student's account? Well, if you want me to send it, I'll send you the report, exact detail of what they bought and everything. For It's usually not us. It's from like a previous year. We send it to them. They're like, oh, well, I can't pay $300. Well, here, can you pay? What can you do? Well, I can pay 20 bucks every week. Okay, just pay 20 bucks every week. And here's the report I send it to her. She'll start paying 20 bucks. So, so. And that's a flat figure. I mean, you're not, there's no interest. There's right. no, right. Like, exactly. it's just, it's strictly, right. there's right. nowhere else that would happen. But that's what we allow here too. Right. And we don't, we don't have service right. fees. Like if they pay with a credit card, yeah. the district has loads of service fees. And just as a way to help you. I seem kind of a crazy idea, but do we have any sort of public service that people could do to work off these fees out, whether it's during the summertime weeding the gardens at the schools or something? Is there anything do we have anything like that in place? Uh, not currently structured, but that's definitely an idea that would be a thought. Yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to bring it up so we can maybe all all of us figure out what might be a better solution than what we have. That's all. I think we're doing like I said, this administration's doing their part on waiving as many fees as possible. We have four years now, free lunches and free breakfast. I mean that's just it's just wonderful and no and no fees. And that will trickle down <laughs> to other programs that are starting. It's just amazing. But like I said, I just was hoping we could come up with a solution. And I know that that social media post also brought up people calling the district and offering to help. So kind of hoping that that also the community that wants to help support, you know, kids that have these balances, we can try to figure out where to put them. And I don't know. And I've had local clubs who have called me because they've seen some of that discussion, that talk, that have asked me, what can we do? So that's the discussion point on our end because it's not that I just pick and choose what student, yeah. what family gets all those monies. So if someone's writing me a check for five thousand dollars, are we the we as in us as administration, the board, Mr. Kraft, are we deciding you know where that money goes versus are we just evenly divide across the board and everyone gets because as mentioned, you can make an impact on two or three that's a very significant impact, or if it's gonna amount to everybody and it shows like three dollars off my account, well. Nobody would even recognize that benefit of a five thousand dollar check when you're spreading across a number of students. So those are decisions. But clearly, like I said, if you've had individuals talk, I've had club-based uh, uh, Norwalk clubs that are also wanting to write checks because they see that. So like, where does that happen? I, I don't think that happens just anywhere. We are we're pretty special yeah, to have right. what we have here. Yeah, there's a lot of people that wanted to help. So. And I know the one thing too about next year too. I know about I know Joyce is big on kids not about paying for milk. You know, well the thing about the CEP is you know kids are still going to pay for milk if they pack, but they don't have to because my my encouragement to the managers and the staff is when a student goes through and they're a packer, hey, take a fruit, take a vegetable, take a milk, it's free. Now you don't pay for your milk, but now you got a fruit, you got a vegetable, so you're good. Go eat it, or if you don't eat it, put it in the share table. Somebody else will. So it could be somebody else to take that for them. So, so it's either way. So it's a win-win no matter what. So one, the child don't have to pay for the milk. So no, not pay for ever again. So it's it's always it's a win-win. So so there won't be no more charges. So don't worry about the milk. So, so that's all I gotta do. Pick up an applesauce cup and pick up some carrot sticks. Throw them in the cart. That's all you gotta do. Take them with your milk. Take a straw. Put them in the put them in the tub and. Go on your way and drink your milk. That's Carrots and milk. I like to pair that together. That's not a craft. <laughs> Great combination. That's what I'm talking about. It's okay. As long as you got the chocolate milk, I don't care. All right. That's all. I just wanted to see what everybody else wants. Anything else? Great. Yeah, most of you two are done.
Second. Second. Roll call. Mr. Norris. Yes. Um, Mrs. Burkett. Yes. Mrs. Crawford. Yes. Mr. Gonzalez. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Isabel. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you.